So my name is Ilham Kadri. I'm the CEO of ScienceCo. And um, today I want to talk about the theme of the conference, which is about sustainability. And st st sustainability started in my home in Morocco. I grew up in Casablanca, in a very humble home, without potable water and without electricity. We had intermittent electricity. And when water came in, actually, sometimes it was unsafe. I got typhoid fever. Just to tell you that sustainability is something you believe in it from the top. And it's something throughout my career, I started and I became very greedy with natural resources. And I want to tell you how we made at Solve for the past five years sustainability meaning profitability. So the power of the end, A and D. We can be sustainable and profitable, we can care and dare, we can be sustainable and grow our business. So to start with um, December 11th, there are some days like uh, the day I, I got my, my baby, my son, he's 18 years old now. December 11, 2023 will, will stay as one of the dates I will remember all my life. This is the day where we did an IPO and we emerged uh, a large specialty company called Today Science Co. And we, I split a company which is 160 year old and you don't wake up a morning and you say, I'm gonna split a 160 year old lady. We did that after five years of very tough, intense transformation. Uh, and now Solve is a separated company from Science Co. And I thank our investors. Look at the over overwhelming positive vote, 99.6%. Can you believe it? They accepted, they understood the rationale of this split. And this split is allowing us indeed to demerge and create one of the largest specialty material companies in the world with actually a uh, board of directors, believe it or not, which is you know, unprecedented, led by a Brit, actually, Rosemary Thorne is a UK citizen, uh, the first independent chairwoman in the history of our uh, company. Uh, three women, actually, at, at the top. It happens, I am a woman, a CEO, but also the chairwoman and the vice chair, 60% of women in our 10 uh, board memberships. Besides the numbers and the planning, when you do the mergers and splits, and this is my second split in my career, one of the most emotional and difficult things to do is to name your company. <laughs> and when you, you give a name, it becomes real. It's like for a baby, right? And finding Science Co. and not keeping Solve was a big deal for our people and for a reference shareholder because it happens 30% of Solve company is still owned by the descendant of the founder Ernest Solve. So we decided like any legacy, any heritage, if you have two kids, you want to give them something and often beyond love, you give them something different. Science Co, I have the honor to lead now, took with it the heritage of Ernest Solvay, who used to, since 1911, and this photo, you may have Googled it, at least if there are scientists in the room, they know it. He started what we call the gathering of the minds. You can see my role model, Marie Curie, the only woman who won uh, twice the Nobel Prizes, but Einstein, Poincaré, and many other scientists who invented the quantum physics. So we took this with us, and this is our purpose, explorers who are creating breakthroughs that advance humanity. So here I am, I shrank my company, right? And I'm leading now a startup, a startup of 13,000 people, right? One out of four, by the way, are shareholders, believe it or not. Over 62 uh, sites, industrial sites in the world, and 25% of us are customer obsessed, not customer intimate, customer obsessed. We wake up every morning and we, we give a phone call, by the way, to customers or non-customers who may not be happy with us. We like that. And you see our distribution, unlike our sister company, Solve, we are, um, you know, largely well distributed across the region, but our first now region of sales and human capital is the Americas, followed by Asia and Europe. So how sustainability means profitability? Because I heard a lot, you can do this, but not the others. Why well, we believe we should be doing both, because at the end of the day, I'm not running a charity company. You want to see both. And that's why I was hired 
at Solvay in 2019 is to fix the balance sheet, create prosperity, but prosperity for all, including the non-financials. So let me start with our home, the planet. The numbers, they speak from, for themselves. This is my five-year resume with, with our team. We were cutting the greenhouse gas emission, half of what Paris required us to do. And when I came in, and I like ambitions which scare me, this is why I'm in front of you today, my team came back, and we, we are a bunch of engineers, nothing wrong with the enge engineers, I am an engineer. They came back and they say, Ilham, we can do one time Paris. And this is really tough. I said, okay, let's go for it. We, believe it or not, we did two times Paris every year since 2019. We cut the emission twice, twice what Paris required us to do. Why? Because we started dreaming big. We start putting uh, projects, and you will see how many there are. They are actually probably here, 59 energy projects. We remove 2 million cars, internal combustion engine cars, off the road every year. We need three times this to reach carbon neutrality. And we told to the world that even if we are a hard to abate industry, we will reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Although we don't know how to do it all, but we know that science will allow us to do that. All of this at an IRR above 17%. In the company I inherited in 2019, which was doing a return on capital employed of 8%. So barely the cost of capital. We address scope one and two, which is inside our walls. That's the 59 projects. But we started caring about scope three, and we became one of the few companies who is now SBTI certified. We internally pushed ourselves to have an internal carbon pricing, where the world doesn't have an internal carbon pricing outside Europe. We did it twice, European carbon pricing. So when it was, in March 2019, when it was 25 euro a ton, it was 50. In 2021, before the Ukrainian war, we already raised it as 100 when it was 50. And when the Russian war in Ukraine hit us with inflation, we were ready. And we still continue taxing ourselves. All projects which comes to my table are priced twice the carbon pricing in Europe. And here we are now with Science Co. We are raising the bar in ambition. Science Co, this new company, is less hard to abate than our sister company, Solvay, and we can reach the carbon neutrality by 2040. We can afford it. In the Capital Market Day last November, I shared those ambitions, and you see that we will continue working on scope one and two, again, with further ambition of neutrality by 2040. We are addressing scope three, According to SBTI, circularity is the best word. When I joined the company Solvay back in 2019, it was around 1% to 2%. It was an anecdote. I exited Solvay at 9%. And here, Science Co., the specialty company, because customers want circularity embedded in our solutions, we're going to double it to 18%. Obviously, like any industrial company, safety is important to us, and we believe that diversity, even beyond gender, is critical for our success, for profitability and innovation. Those are the projects. I pushed my team to make them public and to be accountable about those projects. We have now at Science Co 44 projects, representing 1 million cars, ice cars off the road every year. This impacts my pocket, 15% of my variable pay and 15% of the variable pay of all company is linked to this. Therefore, it's externally audited by our external auditor, like the financials. And beyond scope one and two, beyond, you know, cleaning our home and cutting the greenhouse gas emission, we are scope three for our customers, for you, the end consumers. We are in light weighing. We are in every one out of two EV or hybrid cars contain Science Co products, be it under the hood or in battery. 85% of the vehicles flying in the sky contain our product. We clean water. We are synonymous of resources efficiency. We separate metals from mining, copper mining, lithium, etc., or in recycled products. Battery recycling is something we can do as a chemist. 
If this morning you took a shower with a bio shampoo, if it's guar based, it's us. So buy guar shampoos. They're good for us. We are number one in hemodialysis applications when, you, when people purify their, their, their blood. So I used to call the chemical industry, but I'm a bias because my background is chemists, the mother of all industries. And it's true. We are the scope three of all industries we are going to talk about in this conference. So automotive, clean mobility is important. I told it to you, 50% of EV hybrid cars contain our products. We take a product, a metal under the hood application, we replace it with our products. By the way, we do it in automobile, but we do it in an aircraft. We do it in an, your e-bike. And if it's mobile, if the object is mobile, it consumes less fuel, it emits less CO2. We are synonymous of sustainability. That's what we do. And today, and thanks to IRA, which sweetened the, the business case for my board, we are building the largest PVDF line we've ever built in our history, with 30% of the capex covered by IRA. Aviation is important. You may take a flight back home from this conference, if it's a narrow body, 20% is composite material or products. We can go up to 50%, replacing metal and aluminium, we are synonymous of sustainable aviation. And of course, the buzz is around the adverse air mobilities, those automobiles flying or air taxis, and we are supporting our customers and the end users and the innovators with batteries, with long life batteries. So we are already working in generation three and four away from li liquid, you will hear solid batteries. It's going to be smaller, safer, um, cheaper, by the way, right? So all of this is going to come and bring you more autonomy when you drive your, your car, giving you less uh, driving angst, for example. I'm not sure if you know a novelist called uh, Jules Verne. It happens he's from the 19th century, and he was a visionary because in the 19th century he was talking about making fuel out of water. Ladies and gentlemen, this is green hydrogen. We are at the beginning. So what is hydrogen? You take water, you go through a membrane, for us, it's called aquivion, and there are only few producers in the world. And you produce hydrogen. If it's green energy, if renewable, you call it green. And then you have a soup of alphabets of green, blue, and the rest, right? After you produce this with our technologies, you have to store it. This is where you use composite materials. Because hydrogen is a small molecule, but inflammable. You need to store it safely. It happens that we were with the... Uh, uh, Apollo 11, 1969, or SpaceX, right, launches, so we know how to handle hydrogen effic efficiently. And then you need to transport it to the point of use. You need our non-metallic, high-performance, you know, polymers pipes to do so. And then when you get it into the end-use point of usage, you need a fuel cell which is going to transform hydrogen into electricity and water. This is where you need us again, and we are inside the fuel cell. This is a fantastic opportunity. And I truly believe, I'm agnostic, by the way, to energy or green energy. I mean, I take affordable 24-7 available one, right, around my site. I believe green hydrogen will be needed to get to net zero economy, and this is a great opportunity for us. Biotechnology, we are reimagining the way we do our molecules. It's going to be crafted in our molecules. When I was, I'm a chemist and I was, you know, getting older now. Uh, 30 years ago, when I was doing my PhD, people were asking me to measure the end of life or cycle of a product because the product dies. It's a crime today that a product uh, dies, you know. I'm not going to throw away my jacket this evening. I'm going to use it again and again. That's the same thing for a chemical products, for a solution coming from our technologies. It, we need to talk about the end of the first users, the second users. That's what we call circularity. And that's what our technicians now are doing better from day one where we innovate. So you will see different type of plants and manufacturing assets. When I will retire, I'm sure you will see manufacturing sites in probably a large warehouse rather than hectares of lands. A microorganism, a bacteria, algae, different type of products actually inspired by nature are becoming our raw materials 
in the chemical industry. And this is just fascinating. So some numbers in my company, Science Co, we have four growth platforms. You see them, batteries, materials. As I told you, we're working already on generation four and five, all solids, thermoplastic composites. When you take an aircraft, the eyes are not recyclable, they're not circular. Normally, we didn't care about because an aircraft lasts 60 years, but now people are demanding recyclable, recyclable and circular product that we call it thermoplastic composite, green hydrogen, the new oil, and the biomaterial. And this represents 10 billion euro opportunity. I can cannibalize my business. I can grow it just with those new opportunities. And a big part of our investment is going to these opportunities. What's about the profits? Numbers, you can find them. I cannot speak, obviously. I'm in my quiet period, so all the numbers are uh, public and uh, backward looking. Um, yeah, we made this company just a cash machine. We were a legger in cash conversion. We become a top leader in generating cash. In four years in the company, five years with Solvay, we generated four and a half billion euro of free cash flow distributed. We invested four billion, by the way, in CapEx. We distributed four billion in dividends and paid bonuses to our people. You see, the, we fixed the balance sheet, 50% less debt, 60% 60, 60 less pension, 50% less debt. And most important, probably KPI in my playbook is the return. We almost doubled our return on capital employment. And the other more important things, which the earning calls never address, is the engagements of your people. It's not a one-woman show or one-man show. It's about how people are engaged with you, behind you, through crisis, through transformation and reforms, because it was not a walk in the park, and I pride the 76% engagement score. This is the new company, Science Co. It's a startup. It's two months old now. Eight billion euro global company, uh, top leading specialty margins, 5% um, you know, investment in R&I, research and innovation, very important, this is higher than our peers, and 20% vitality index, What's a, what does it mean? Every year, we cannibalize and churn ourselves with 20% of products which are less than five years old, which give you how good we are as an innovation machine. Those are targets, you can find them for the coming years. And then I will finish, it's all about people and people and people. And we've done a lot on the people side. And I think the one thing I'm really proud of is really the one in four, you know, shareholders, right? I mean, in my company, there was no employee shareholding program, right? And the day you, we open it, actually, 50% of this population are blue collars. You need to know that 40% of my population are blue collars. They bought shares, they have skin in the game. And we love this. And I like to dream big. I like dreams which are scaring us. If not, they are not big enough. So a few weeks ago, we launched our uh, adventure, a new one with uh, the explorer Bertrand Picard. You may remember him in 2016. He did the world tool with the solar aircrafts. But he stopped. There were 16 stopovers. Now we are going to go with these aircrafts. You see the two reservoirs here. This is hydrogen. We're going to do the world tour in nine days without stop with green hydrogen in it. Science Co will be on board, but more than just our materials and technologies, our hearts and our employees will do the tour with Bertrand. Thank you very much.